Hi, it's Peter from Record Power. Uh, on the next few videos, I'm going to be introducing you to our Sabre 250 and the most recent addition to our fleet of uh, bandsaws. And like the other uh, models in the Sabre range, it's got some uh, extra additional features which just make the machine easier to use, um, give you a little bit more performance out of the machine and a little bit more versatility um, which I'll take you through. So first off it's a two speed machine um, by changing the bolt uh, over on the pulleys so your bottom speed is 460 and your top speed is uh, 1000 meters per minute um, horsepower you've got a half horsepower output uh, 360 watt and an input of about 550 watts so a nice bit of extra performance there off the motor and with the added blade speed just it makes it a lot easier to dimension your bits of timber on there uh, so you can do your ripping quite easily and uh, when you're doing your radius cuts and stuff like that you're less likely to stall in the cut as long as you've got the right correct blade same as our other uh, Sabre band saws, you've got keyless operation for setting your guides up on the sides, spring loaded so you can adjust them over, and on the backs, and that's the same on the top set, just move them up like the way at the moment. And for the sake of the video, I've also removed the guard, and that's only so as I can show you the, how to set it up and introduce you uh, to the guides. And I advise you to do it when you get a machine like this. Take that little bottom guard off so you can set the, the blade up in the, initially when you get the machine but put it back on afterwards. But it gives you an idea then how it all the functions works rather than having everything buried with that little guard um, and then you you know with the table on. Leave it with the table off just for, the, just for setting the machine up in the initial um, build up. So like I say it's a two speed machine. I think the first thing to do is actually change the belt over and I'll show you how to do that and in the same instance I'll show you a few other extra features of the bandsaw while I'm working around it. So I've already fitted some items on and I'll take you through those shortly. First of all if you take it round you've got two cap screws on the bottom here needing 8mm allen key and if you release those and then just lift the motor up and just rest it on the top screw first and come around again so at the moment I've got the belt in the front position so I want to drop it down from the top pulley onto the lower one and onto the motor one and in doing so I want to make sure because it's a poly V belt I want to make sure that they it's sitting into the correct grooves so then back around again, what I want to do is release that. So it's probably just drop that down on its own weight and just have a little bit of flex into the belt and I can lock these up. You don't need that belt really tight. You still need a little bit of flex in there. Otherwise you're going to put extra strain on your motor and do bearings. That results in the motor getting hotter and wearing stuff out quicker. If come back around here, I've got a little bit of flex in there and that all spins nice and freely. The machine at the moment is unplugged and I'll show you uh, the leads because um, for the different marketplaces there's different leads to plug into it uh, for the different types of plugs that you've got on there. First up, open this back up again. Oh, I'm just going to show you the other bits as well. So, with this machine, you've got the door lock, so I get the cam locks here, and that's designed for a safety operation. Even uh, this is a um, um, the motor, when you switch it off, it comes to rest and the idea of these are that you're not going to get into a, uh, a moving blade. So these are interlocked as well. You've got a micro switch at the top. 
But what I've already fitted is the tensioner for the um, tensioning up for the actual um, bandsaw blade. I've also put in situ the screw for the push stick. On the top here, we've actually got a little bracket fitted so you can keep your fence in place, and that the fence slides on there and then just clamp it. That's fixed in place. Then we'll put it on the worktop and knock it on the floor or something. The last, well, oh, some of our last features. On the back, you've got a little location for your keys and your spanner, and then the standard sort of items uh, your tracking knob, the lock there for adjusting the angle of your band wheel, and then the lock there, and then this takes your tool arm up and down. But one of the added features on this machine that makes this a small machine quite a, a nice machine is you've got quick release for your bandsaw blade. So that's a nice little feature, especially um, if you're doing like for like. So if you're changing a, a 3 8 blade for a 3 8 blade, you're going to nearly be there on the setting. If when you bring it over it's too tight, you ease it back a little bit and take a little bit of tension. Again, if it's too loose, take it back and then uh, put some tension on. So we've come back to the front of the machine again. And what I look to do now is install the blade. So I want the tool arm approximately midway down so that I can get fit the blade in. And I've got the widest blade uh, available to me at the moment, which is just a half inch blade. And before I fit it, as with all blades really, you just want to give it a little clean. This has been in a manufacturing kind of process. And also check the condition of the blade uh, and the teeth, the direction should be down of the teeth. And when we come to the weld part, have a quick look at that. That's not too bad, it's not got much of a lump on there. Sometimes you get a lump onto the back of the blade and that causes a little bit of sparking. You can clean that off with a stone or a file. But take that mock off the blades, it saves it then being transferred onto your band ones. to do is start putting the blade in at the top. I know my teeth is in the right position. Not an easy way for this. Be patient to put the bead in. Because it is a band and it just needs guiding in to place. Nice. Like I say, with these little locks here, I can move this ball as quickly out of the way so that I'm not going to get any external interference off the guides when I'm putting my new blade in. So that's about right. And what I need to do next is put a little bit of tension onto there and then just track check lock in action. What I want is to feel some pressure on there but not touching the body initially with uh, ease. So I'll bring it round. What we also have on here is two windows. So you can actually see at the side of the machine where the blade is in relation to the band wheels. Because basically the band wheel, you want the blade in the centre of it, thereabouts. It's not massively critical, but there or thereabouts, the blade runs in the centre of the band wheel. The band wheels are, uh, are crowned, so we're just looking for that. So, first of all, I want to spin it just to see roughly where she's going. And this is just a little bit to the front. Right, 
say is when you put the, put the lever over, you can feel if it's too tight, so if you don't, don't want to force it, bring it back, take a little bit of pressure off. But I'm not far off there. Your initial setting. All I can want to do then is just give the machine a run. So, like I say, you get um, a couple of power leads supplied with the machine, and this plugs in just to the rear of the motor here. all nice and tidy, push that into there. Before I bring it, start the machine up, I'll just bring the tool arm down and lock it off so I haven't got loads of blade exposed, I've no need to do that. And just check it. And I'm not far off at all on there. A little, just a slight movement. So I'm going to adjust that. Also, just check my position of my blade. And I hardly want anything this time. That's okay, so the actual blade is running quite cleanly. So what I want to do now is look to set my guides up. So if I can do that, I can move this up to about midpoint of the travel. Lock that off. Always lock, when you're setting your guides, always lock your position off as well. And then look to the bottom ones. Now the little bottom ones, I've got a lever at the side here, which I can undo, and that lets me move this bracket backwards and forwards, carry the guides, and I want the rollers of the bearings to be behind the teeth, so as they don't come into this contact with the set of the teeth at all. While I'm doing this, I'll just unplug the machine, and check side ones, up to the blade, just ease it back a bit. You can do this with um, a bit of paper or something like that. It's just, just you want to be able to pass something through like that without it dragging too tightly. Don't want the guides to be spinning around. back one, a little bit more of a gap on the back one, take it up to the back of the blade and then just ease it off with the pressure. And what I want it to do is none of that to spin. I've got a little bit on the side one. Because what you have on most blades, because you've had a band that's been reduced and wound down, you're, you're likely to have a little bit of just distortion in the blade a little bit. And some of the thicker blades is more noticeable than the, than the thinner blades because of the section of the material. So you might just get the odd catch and that's the same on the back roller where the welding's taken taking place of the blade. You might just have a slight step on there and so you can clean that off with a stone or a file and to make that a little bit smoother. But in general they're pretty good. So that's not far away. So I've got a little gap on the back of the blade so when I go onto the cut that rear bearing takes the travel of the blade to stop it being pushed off and my teeth are still um, not engaging with the guides so that if they do run in there what will happen it will knock the set off and you won't be able to get a, a straight cut you'll still be able to cut on there but it's basically then going to be for curvatures and bowls and stuff like that but it's not going to follow a true line so not too bad on there, and I'll say I'll move this down to approximately in the mid position then, so um, it, it should all come together again. So 
on this side, I've got the control for the rear guide, that one. And then I've got the two side ones on here and the locks there. To actually adjust the, the unit backwards and forwards, you want to do this little um, control here, this little knob here. And again, I want the top guys just to be behind the teeth. And then the rear one, again, up to the back of the blade, and then just back in my fingers. got no noise, it's nice and clear. So there's two side ones. When you've set that up, just put your lever down so it's clear when you're doing your table. Uh, I've already put in the bolt for setting the, the table square to the blade. So the next operation will be that. And in the meantime, I want to give this a quick run, make sure everything's okay. video um, I'm going to put the table on and show you how to um, set that up so the fence is already I've already hung up what's nice about this fence uh, apart from being able to locate it on the machine and keeping it secure and free of damage um, I'm going to come to some other bits and pieces on it but you actually you can move this fence from the left hand side to the right hand side so you can swap this around and that's uh, that's that, that's a really useful um, addition to a small machine like this so when you're doing your tilts and stuff the fence is supporting the timber so it, it makes it a lot easier uh, to process so like I say in the next video I'll take you through how to set that up and get the best out of your machine <laughs>